Welcome to this audio recording of the Easter celebration at the Wasion Congregational United Church of Christ with Pastor William Kerr and liturgist Helen Leedy. We invite you to join us now in worship as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome again to this glorious and holy Sunday morning, Easter Sunday. It's so good to see you all, and uh, what a wonderful day our Lord has provided for us. Let us truly rejoice and be glad in this glorious Easter morning. A uh, couple things this morning. You see, we're going to have some music. Jim's providing our organist. has already played two services this morning, and I contracted to our sister church over there at Trinity and provide her lovely music. So we have some beautiful music we'll be singing along to the carillon this morning. Uh, I'd like to, a couple things, I'd like to take a moment and... Uh, Welcome, Justin Humphreys. Back with us. Where is, I see Justin. Is he, oh, you had to go home? Well, Justin was with us for breakfast this morning. Good to see him. Welcome back with your family. Good to see Justin back home to get, uh, this morning also. So good to have him with us. A um, couple announcements that we'll bring forward this morning before we get started with our service. Um, Thank you to all who brought food, the wonderful breakfast we had downstairs this morning. Very good. I hope got their fill, I'm sure. It's good to be to join together in breakfast and, and Christian fellowship this morning, begin this wonderful day. Um, reminder that at 10 o'clock in the morning, we have uh, our uh, Sunday school, adult Sunday school. We talk about the scriptures each Sunday, so join us for that if you can. Uh, the 59th annual meeting of the Northwest Ohio Association will be coming up. We'll learn more about what's, go- what's going on in the Northwest Association on April 30th from about 9.30 to 12, it will be on Zoom. So if you want to uh, join that, I'd like to see what goes on, you can do that. It's $15, you can uh, sign in, and uh, if you need help getting uh, registered for that, you can do that. So it's um, always an interesting, good time to, to join and see what's going on in our greater church. Um, also uh, not printed here is the, uh, uh, on Monday nights, we'll continue with our Bible study. We've been studying uh, church growth, a really nice, uh, a program we've been studying and we'll probably be following up on that, but also beginning again our Bible studies each Monday night here at the church at 7 o'clock. Uh, after church today at 1230, join us down at uh, North Park. We'll have some egg hunts for hopefully the kids in the community. So join us right after church there down at North Park for some egg hunting there. So we'll join, look for that and join in time together after church. A couple birthdays this morning, uh, April 21st, Ross Paxson, birthday to Russ. And uh, Mike Tressler on the 22nd, and Fred Eicher on the 22nd. We need to sing some happy birthday to Fred, I think, this morning. Happy birthday to those two, so let's sing happy birthday to Fred Eicher this morning. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Fred. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Fred. Have a wonderful day there on the 22nd. Keep them coming. God bless you. Happy birthday. That's all the announcements I had this morning. Are there any joys or concerns to come before the uh, service for the church this morning? Anybody? Any prayers to uplift? Certainly keep in mind the uh, folks in Ukraine and Russia, and certainly uh, apparently COVID's kind of on the move again a little bit, so we have to keep, uh, keep our whole country and the world in prayers for that going forward. Um, okay, any others? If not, we'll proceed with our beautiful Easter service this morning. Let's now join our opening hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, number 288 in the green.
Let's now join together in our call to worship on our bulletins. The tomb is empty. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed and has appeared to all of us. He brings new life through the power of resurrection, new hope because of God's love for people, new love for each other because he first loved us. We are new persons in the love of the risen Christ. Hallelujah. Praise our God. Let's now join in invocation prayer. Surprise us, O oh God, as you surprise the visitors at the tomb that first Easter morning. Let us experience your glorious resurrection and turn our fear into joy so that we may be worthy instruments of your love and power in our everyday lives. May your resurrection spirit allow us to die to ourselves so that we might live in the spirit of our risen Lord. Amen. Let's now join another hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, number 295 in the green. If you need to sit, go ahead and sit down. 295 in the green. be seated. I call us now to our regular time of confession. It is indeed we confess our sins before God, for we are all sinners. We are called to examine our faithfulness to God's covenant with us. God, who, in whose presence we gather, promises us grace and pardon when we acknowledge our weakness and shame. Let us confess our sin to Almighty God. Let's join the prayer confession in the bulletin. We do not always walk well along the edge, God. At times we fall into chasms which separate us from you, from one another, from ourselves. With eyes closed, we risk falling into the abyss. We attempt to stabilize our journey by demanding signs and seeking wisdom along the way. We fail to ask, where is Christ being sacrificed now? At the end of our journey, the hour will be at hand. The questions flood our conscious minds what would we have done that night in Gethsemane? Could we have been part of the political machinery that murdered Christ? We shudder at the answers. We need the strength and assurance of your grace. Amen. Let's now join our hearts and minds in our silent confessions before our God. 
Let us pray. Let us join together now in these words of assurance together. We have the assurance that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. He is risen. Hallelujah. Okay, the first one we will be reading in the book of Isaiah 65, 17 through 25. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their children with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. And the second one will be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19 through 26. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all men most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Thank you again, Helen, for reading those scriptures this morning. 
The first, uh, next reading will be the gospel reading will be taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Hear these words from the Gospel of John. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter then came out with the other disciple, and they went toward the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying, and the napkin which had been on his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. And then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise from the dead. And then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Saying this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and, my, and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and said to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. We're going to read this reading of the Gospel of John. These words are true. You can truly be trusted. Amen. And amen. Let's start joining our sermon hymn, Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Strain, number 185 in the red. You may remain seated.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. It's Easter Sunday. He is raised. He is raised and risen indeed. I don't know if you can see this little sign. My, my uh, artwork isn't great here, but I made this little sign over here. Can you tell what it says? I got one up here until I made up. It says, uh, it says, God is N-O-W-H-E-R-E. God is nowhere. Does that, can you see that, what that says? God is nowhere. Okay? Keep that in mind as we talk about this, as you listen to this message this morning a little bit. God is nowhere. So a story is told of a young mother who was driving with her sick five-year-old child to church early on Easter morning. And as she drove, she shared the story of Easter with her child. She concluded by saying, this is the day we celebrate Jesus coming back to life. In a few moments, she heard from the back seat, will he be in church today? Well, what do you think if I told you that when I was praying for the, preparing for this sermon, I prayed for God to help me. And I distinctly heard, don't worry, I'll send my son for the Sunday service. Friends, I believe now, I believe Jesus is right here, right now, standing beside you, behind you, in the back of the church. Now, were you tempted to turn around and look? Possibly. Do you think I maybe need a long rest in a secure facility, seeing that for some reason? Have you come here this morning expecting to see Jesus Christ? If not, why are you here? If you come to church expecting nothing, that is exactly what you will find. In verse 1 of the Gospel lesson this morning, it tells us that early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that a stone had been removed from its entrance. Why did Mary go to the tomb? What was she expecting? I want to tell you a story about a friend of mine named Betty. Betty went to the mausoleum every day to visit Bob, her recently deceased husband. She said she poured out her feelings, thoughts, and emotions to Bob every time she went there, knowing he was not really there, but it made her feel better. One day, while visiting with Bob, she looked up at the name freshly chiseled on the stone. It wasn't Bob's name. So she went to the cemetery office to tell them of the error. They calmly took her to the mausoleum space where Bob had been placed. It was three spaces to the left of the place where Betty had been visiting with a complete stranger. The reason I am telling you this is that in verses 2 through 8, we can relate what took place when Mary shared her discovery. Mary expected one thing that morning, but she and the disciples experienced something entirely, completely different. In verse 2, Mary says, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Mary assumes the body has been stolen. Her expectation isn't met. Was she at the wrong place? She doesn't think of that. Neither did my friend Betty in the mausoleum. In verse 3 it says, So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. They did not believe Mary, or did they? Were they curious or concerned enough to find out for themselves? What would you have done? One disciple looks in the tomb, but Peter went straight into the tomb. And in verse 8, it says, Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside, and they saw 
and they believed. Now, believing, knowing, or seeing Jesus are three entirely different things, my friends. Perhaps you have come here this morning experiencing some merry moment. Have you had a time when everyone and everything around you doesn't really make sense? Perhaps you are feeling the world around you is crumbling and you feel isolated and alone. In verse 10, it tells us that the disciples, the disciples went back to where they were staying, back to their homes. It's as though nothing has changed for them. This story appears in all the Gospels in one form or another. However, only in John Gospel does Mary weep. Mary sheds tears of hopelessness, despair, and frustration. She just doesn't understand what is happening. We read in verses 11 through 15 her expressing vividly her emotions and frustrating situation. Then, suddenly, things change. Because in verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned around toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. When Jesus addresses her by her name, Mary then recognizes him. That, my friends, is the true message of Easter. So in conclusion, please look at the title of this message on this sign that I have made with the letters God, I-S-N-O-W-H-E-R-E. God is nowhere. What do you see? What does it say? Does it say God is nowhere? Or do you see God is now here? God is now here, not nowhere. The message of Easter is that God has come to earth to us, to all of us. We may fail to see and believe because we want to see with our head and not our hearts. That's the way it is with the resurrection, isn't it? Some believe and some don't. In fact, unfortunately, most don't. And that's the way it's always been. But in our day, skepticism is even more acute, I think, unfortunately. The motto that seems to be gaining acceptance here of late is follow the science. And many moderns think themselves to be sophisticated and scientifically informed, simply refuse to believe pretty much anything that has to do with what Christians call revelation. But certainly not that a man can be raised from the dead. The world in which we live assigns to death the last word, the final say. But not God. Oh, no. God claims that life, life has the last word. Jesus himself tells us in the most famous Bible verse of all that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? What? Eternal life. John 3, 16. Christ Jesus will be with us when we establish a personal relationship with him by walking in his way, seeking his will and showing his love. Only then does Christ Jesus emerge victorious. God is now here with us all, has been here right along, and will be with us 
for eternity. Right here in this beautiful sanctuary today with us as we worship on this glorious Easter morning. God is now here today. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Father, we are here to worship you and praise you for this wonderful, glorious Easter morning. This time we feel closest to you. This time we feel our faith so strong. This time we believe, just like Mary believed and his disciples found out, that Jesus is alive. He died for us, died for our sins, is now sitting in the right hand, right hand of our Father in heaven, that we truly shall receive eternal life. Father, we thank you for the life that you have given us here on earth, this wonderful experience year after year, season after season, Easter after Easter. We give you thanks for all the memories we have within these walls, for all the saints that are now with you, we give you thanks. For the many, many wonderful memories we've had of Easter, of Easter eggs and candy and special love of family time, singing wonderful praises of hymns to you, wonderful times in our churches as we grew up. We thank you today for our families and friends and for all the blessings that you bring to us and that we know are still to come. Thank you, thank you for this Easter morning, Lord. We also turn to this day and we ask you to be with us for anyone who might need you today, any of your servants, your children, who are having difficulties. Come into their hearts or minds, help them to feel your peace, your strength, hope for the future, feel your love. Increase their faith in you, that they may come through the valleys, back to the mountaintops, and we receive their peace. Be with those folks. Father, we ask you to be with the terrible wars going on in the Ukraine with the Russians. Again, we ask you to bring this terrible war to an end. Stop the violence, the hatred. Let the world come to understanding what peace should be. Support the Ukrainians who have lost or are losing so much. Lord, also continue to be with all those who may have dealt with COVID or are still dealing with COVID. And all those who have maybe lost a friend or loved a family member to COVID. Help them give, you, give them your peace that you know they're now with you. Again, be with us all, Lord, as we, from time to time, need to come to you with our prayers. Now, Lord, we ask you and we turn to you with our own private prayers, personal prayers we lift up to you this morning. Please hear our prayers as we lift them, our personal private prayers to you in silence. Let us pray. Now, Father, again, we ask you to strengthen our faith, knowing, Lord, that God is here with us. Through Jesus Christ, we know, your Son, that God, has, that he has taught us, that God has always been with us, right from the start, and he will be with us right to the end, our entire lives, that you are always here for us. Help us to indeed know that indeed you are here in the sanctuary this morning and everywhere we go in the coming week and through our lives, that you follow us, you guide us, you love us, you forgive us, that you're always with us. Now on this Easter morning, Father, let us pray together the prayer that your Son taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning we're going to have a little offertory uh, musical uh, 
choice that Jim has found. We'd like to dedicate this to our blessed sister, Susan Short, who has sang this song many times in our congregation through the years. What a wonderful piece that we remember Susan singing for us often, often on Easter Sunday and often in this church. What a beautiful voice that Susan had. So may God bless Susan as we remember her this morning with that beautiful piece. Let's pray. O God, most merciful and gracious, of whose bounty we have all received, accept, we pray, this offering of your people, remembering in your love those who have brought it and those for whom it is given, and so follow it with your blessing, 
that it may pro promote peace and goodwill among all people and advance the realm of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's now join in our closing hymn, The Day of Resurrection, number 298 in the green. Please now join with me in the benediction. Go into the world in peace. Jesus Christ is victorious over all the powers of this earth. You are free to live with courage, trusting in God your strength and the Holy Spirit your comfort. Thanks be to God. And may God bless you all this Easter. We have worshiped God here in our wonderful sanctuary on this glorious Easter morning. May the spirit of Easter be with you all this week and indeed throughout your life. Amen and amen. You've been listening to the Easter morning worship at the Wasion Congregational United Church of Christ. We appreciate your support and invite you to visit our website at wasionucc.org to make online gifts and contributions. Alleluia, Christ is risen. <laughs>